Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another layer by layer. Today I want to talk about thicknesses. What type of thickness should I use for my enclosure, right? So we're going to do a little bit of experimentation, just go through some of the thicknesses and then and take a look at how they look like and how they behave inside our slicing software. So I'm in Fusion 360. I'm just going to make a quick uh, enclosure using a box primitive up here. And I'll draw it on this plane. And I'll make it something like that big. Uh, the tallness and the dimensions really don't matter. This is just to show you guys um, sort of thicknesses. So I hit OK, and I'll even add a fillet here. I hit F on my keyboard, and I'll just select these edges here, and then I'll hit 3, why not? And this is probably too small, so I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. I'll make this, let's say, 50 by 80. And then the tallness will be like 10, and I'll hit OK. All right, so there's our box. Really, really simple. Now, before I apply a shell, I'm going to open up our change parameters window. So under modify, you can find it here, change parameter. I like to have it in my dock, so I have it up there. So I'll make a, a, a user parameter by clicking on that little green plus button. And I'll name this thickness. And then I'll change the expression to something like one millimeter. And that's what we'll start with. So I'll hit OK. Now I'll click on the top surface and then right click, bring up this little menu here. And then I can do a shell. So it's really easy to get to. And now I'm just going to type in thick. And before I even finish it, I can select thickness as the user parameter. So I'll select that and hit OK, Enter on my keyboard. And I have our, uh, our thickness, it's our shell rather. Our shell is one millimeter thick. So now let's go ahead and export this out and see how many uh, shells, how many parameters we get in our slicing software. And we'll, take, and we'll go from there. So I'll right click on it and hit Save as STL. And under in in the save as STL window here, on the on the right hand side, you can see uh, I have uh, output selected, and I have send to three D printer utility that's checked, and I have simplify three D, which is my go to slicer already selected. So I will hit OK, and it'll just send it there through me. So I won't even I won't even have to save it to the desktop. It's a quick way to do this. So now I have that. So let's take a look at the profile that I have. I'm going to be using the printer bot play, which I have behind me. The printer bot play has a nozzle diameter of 0.4 millimeters, and I have the extrusion the extrusion multiplier set to one, and I have the extrusion width set to auto, which has it grayed out here. The real value is 0.48 millimeters, and that's really important to know. Uh, most sort of your your default, um, yeah, your default stock um, extruder settings are usually this, and if you're inside of something like Cura it's probably like 100% multiplier. So just a little bit of a different there. It's, it's kind of the same, but not really. OK, the next thing I'll take a look at is layers. I have two shells selected, four top and bottom layers. And in my infill, I have 20%. And that's all we really need to uh, take a look at. This is really the main stuff, the nozzle diameter, the extrusion multiplier, and the extrusion width. So remember that. All right, so I'll hit OK. So now I'll go ahead and prepare to print. And take a look here. I have the coloring turned on to feature type, so I can see that my solid layers are the bottom, it's green, and the outer parameters are blue. So if you see here, I only have two parameters, and that's not bad. I mean, it's not super strong. You could probably crush it with your hand. Um, so it depends, and if you want an enclosure that thin, you can totally do so. Maybe it, it's, it doesn't need to be strong, um, but this is, Normally, I don't use a one millimeter thick parameter or shell. I usually don't do that. So let's go ahead and go back. Well, let me delete it first. Let me exit the preview mode and hit remove. Now back inside of Fusion, I'll open up our change parameters. And I'm going to put uh, 1.2 millimeters. Let's see what that looks like. So I'll go ahead and export it, save as this TL, and then just hit OK. And it'll get dropped right back into uh, our slicer, Simplify 3D. So let's go ahead and prepare to print. Let's take a look at it. And you'll notice that now there's a gap in between those two parameters. There's a little gap. And if you measure it with your calipers, it's trying to get as close to 1.2 millimeters as, as it can. So that isn't really strong at all. It's just there's a little bit of air now in between those two parameters. So let's, let's remove that. And let's try uh, 1.3. Let's see what happens. 
So I'll change that, hit OK, right click, save as, hit OK. And now let's slice it. And you can see the gap is getting bigger. So ideally at some point, we're gonna get a, a, a line in the middle here. We're supposed to get a line in the middle here. So let's exit preview and open up our profile and go to the, the advanced tab. And you'll see I have something here called wall, thin wall behavior. Only use parameters for thin walls. Oh, well that's, that's something to know. So if you click on this second option, allow gap fill when necessary, this will try to fill in the gap. You can stay here, uh, there's a roll over here, cool. Uh, fill thin walls with perimeters when possible and then use, uses infill to close out any gaps that are created when a parameter is something something. That is cool, let's try that out. Let's see what, it should give us something in the middle in between those two parameters. And yes we do, we get something. But you notice there's a weird sort of, it's not exactly a straight line. It's actually um, little bits uh, of material that's being, it won't really play. Yeah, you can see what the nozzle is doing. It's kind of making a zigzag pattern. And what happens is when you 3D print that, you'll actually get some noticeable um, reson resonance. You'll get a, a sort of, your, it won't look as clean. The wall won't look as clean because the printer is like is moving back and forth rapidly. The printer head anyway is moving back and forth rapidly. Or maybe the bed is moving, depending on your type of printer, right? So that's not ideal. We just want a clean path. Just make a straight line across the thing. So this isn't a good um, thickness, no. So we're going to try 1.4 and see what happens. Let's try that. So now it's 1.4 millimeters. I prepared to print. And now we got even a, a, a more noticeable zigzag, right? It's now staggering them on top of each other as you, as you, uh, as you draw it up, right? As the printer draws up on the Z, it's, you can see it's sort of stack, stacking those uh, bits. I, I'm, still not, I'm still not at that clear, um, nice and clean tool path. So I'm gonna hit exit and get out of here. Now let's try 1.5, whoops. So let's change this 1.4 to 1.5. Let's see what happens. Export it. Like that. All right, so now it's 1.5 millimeters. Well, what happens? Hey, look at that. Now it's a solid clean line. And you can see it's now the inner parameter. It's, it's colored light blue and the outer parameters. All right. So that's cool. Now, one thing I want to note, guys, take a look at this. Let's say I want to add more shells. I just want to make it thicker. You would think if I double this account right here where it says outline or perimeter shells, I just, let's say you want four. And now I've changed that two into a four, right? So you would think that, oh, well, it's just going to get thicker, right? And that's not how it works. Because the model is, it has a shell, it's not going to apply that to it. What it only is applying it to is the sort of the bottom layer. You can see here the bottom layer has one, two, three, four perimeters, but not the walls because the wall would get thicker. So just to note that, that that's, that's not gonna give you an extra parameter, even though it kinda sounds like it would, but it, it actually doesn't. So just to keep that in mind, okay? All right, so that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Uh, 1.5 millimeters is a safe bet. Now, it's only going to be good is if you have the multiplier set there and your nozzle, di your no your, your, uh, nozzle diameter set to 0.4 with the extrusion width of uh, 0.48. So that's really important. If you, if you were to, if you're using something like 0.9, and let's say you change this to like 0.4. Notice what I've changed. I still have the same nozzle diameter, but now I have a smaller extrusion multiplier and a uh, thinner extrusion width. So let's see what happens. Now I have two. I have, well, actually I have four. I have one, two, three, four. Now I can actually try to do those um, four shells. Let me, let me change the shells back to two and see what we get. Hit okay, prepare to print. And it's about the same, it's exactly the same. Only now we have two parameters on the first layer. So it's, it's kind of the same. So you can see what I'm doing is um, 
you it really depends on or you can you can tweak just by tweaking the extrusion width and the extrusion multiplier you can get a different set of parameters so that's something to note as well and that that may make it uh that may make it um that's weird oh yeah sorry there i'm like why is it two shells well, because it's, or why is it four shells when this is two? Well, again, that's because I have a, a thinner multiplier. It, 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 can, it can output more parameters because I have a thinner multiplier and a thinner width. So I'm going to change this back to one and this back to auto and hit OK. And then you'll see that my lines are just thicker now. So that's really important stuff to know. So another thing to test would be, well, does this actually measure, measure out to uh, 1.5 millimeters, right? So which one gets you a better, a big, a better, um, more accurate result when you print it. Well, that all depends too. So I don't, ha I haven't 3D printed it, but um, I normally always use 1.5 millimeters for all my enclosures. So if you see all the projects that I work on, they're always 1.5 millimeters thick, and this is why. Um, so if you if you ever print one of my enclosures and you notice that there's a, a something's different, um, here's how to get it closer to what I ideally I'd, I. I have it printed too. So there you go. I hope this was useful to you guys. Um, definitely try this out yourself. Do some experimenting because uh, once you start laying in components in here and they're really close to the wall, uh, changing your thickness after you've already modified everything and locked everything in place, it might start colliding. So you have to kind of uh, think about this before you actually start um, laying out your components for your project. So hopefully this will help you guys out. Uh, just want to do a quick one. Um, let me know if you guys have any thoughts, any comments, any experiences. What is your favorite thickness to use for your enclosures? Is uh, is something like three parameters your ideal thing? Or do you like to stick with four? Like maybe you can change it to uh, four millimeters. So try this out and see what's your favorite um, thickness. But all of my projects use a shell, and they're all enclosures for the most part. So I thought this would be pretty important to, to cover because I haven't seen uh, anything else that I haven't really covered layer thickness like this. So that's it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, again, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll see you guys next week. Uh, but until then, remember to keep on making. Bye, guys.